I was having a conversation with my wife earlier today and we were discussing a little bit about the subject of where people have chosen to live. And I've advocated quite a lot that we're at the beginning of what I call the Great Migration happening. And so it's interesting to pay attention to why this is happening and what sort of key changes have driven where people go. Now the comment that she had made was, there's all these different reasons we had given in the past. And it turns out the single most important, the factor of disproportionate influence, the predominant thing to consider has been economic opportunity. Economic opportunity really is the thing that we build all these layers of other stuff on. And I'm gonna talk about, about that in a second, but we're gonna dovetail it in with today's conversation, which is what I call the four digital nomad lifestyles. And so for people who are freed from the shackles of needing to be in some specific place, we're gonna talk about four ways that you can sort of live life differently. I'll share with you my comments, having lived in various versions of these over the last several years. And uh, would be curious to hear what you guys think about how you've taken advantage of being in uh, a free, a location independent scenario and being in a situation where you would recommend one thing to another versus other. So put those in the comments below. I'll look forward to reading them. And in the meantime, let's dive in and talk about these others. Before we do, as always, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Thank you for being here. And if you're interested in help with things related to where's the best place to relocate to, how to optimize your global taxes, forming companies, opening bank accounts, getting residencies, getting citizenships, any of those things, we are some of the foremost experts in international tax and relocation. We're happy to help you. Please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash michael-rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay, so very quickly, the concept that we were talking about here is that uh, nations, the whole idea of nations is like, okay, you build up all of this stuff related to that nation, right? You, turns out, have, uh, you're saying, okay, well, you know, we have uh, culture and we have rule of law and we have all these different things that uh, we're supposedly, religion, religion has arguably been one that has served sort of a function within society. And we've sort of thought for a long time that these kind of build this thing of uh, society, but actually what we find is that they actually build up on this economic foundation. That's one of the reasons why people being freed in the location where they're required to be in order to make money unlocks so much change within society over the next probably 100 years or something. The entire concept of nations is probably in certain places going to be threatened, and I would suggest that we will gradually, slowly, bit by bit over the next decades and you know, 100, 200 years, however long that happens to be, change our concepts of how we organize nations precisely because of the fact that people are no longer required to be in a given place. So obviously they you know, still need to get along and they still need to have various services and all that kind of stuff. So there will be some forms of coordination, but there will be a fundamental restructuring of this. And so with that in mind, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, being a digital nomad. Uh, I don't know if digital nomad is necessarily the right term. I tend not to necessarily love uh, the idea or the term nomadic because I think that you know how nomadic are you can be some sort of a gradient from one side to another. But I do think that the idea of being location independent and how to take advantage of that, seeing the world, is a big deal. And, you know, as I talk to clients, people will sometimes call and sometimes they don't have experience in a bunch of things and they say, well, where do I start? And where I always tell them is start by traveling. Go to some places, experience them, see what you like. You may, at the very least, you're going to expand your horizons. You'll be a richer person just as like a human being you will be more worldly, you'll be able to connect with people differently, you'll be able to see other perspectives. It's like an undeniably fascinating, wonderful, enriching experience. So definitely I encourage everybody to go travel. I try to go to a few new countries every year, plus hit up a few countries that I have already been every year. And yeah, it's just always, I'm super happy about it. So with that in mind, uh, there's sort of four different modalities in which you can live this. Okay, maybe there's more, but there's four that I loosely have identified. So the most basic one is probably like a more enhanced version of what most people live, right? So how do most people live? Most people live in one place. They probably have an apartment or a house. They probably have it on a year-long rent or they own it. And they maybe go on a vacation. 
I don't know, like say for two weeks to four weeks per year, maybe, you know, a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. And that's kind of like their brief getaway, maybe in the summer, maybe around Christmas, again, depends on the culture, things like this. But that's sort of how they experience life. And this is basically because about 48 so weeks per year, they have to work. And they have to work in an office, or they have to work in a factory, or work on a job site of some sort. And hence, they're drawn into and stuck in that place, and that is what it is. But then there's the people who are able to unlock some more freedom because where they make their money and where they physically are have nothing to do with each other. So what this does is it opens up the possibility that you can vacation a lot more and for a much longer period of time. So maybe you go on month-long vacations and you do it a few times a year. But you still have a central base that you come back to, right? So this model is I have a base and I go out for vacations from out from there. And sometimes that might be quite extended. Like, for example, I used to spend... Mm, probably like six or so months a year traveling like this. And sometimes I'd be gone for a month, two months, three months. Sometimes I'd just be gone for a week or a weekend or something like that. But you get to see a bunch of the world, you get to have other experiences, you get to meet new people, and you still have this base to sort of ground you where you have all your things. I think this is actually like a pretty good quality of life, okay? Now, the more enhanced version of that, which I think that as you progress, you tend to go to, and honestly gives an enormous boost in lifestyle is having multiple bases, okay? Usually two is like, you know, there's a diminishing return after two, but you say, okay, I have a place here and then I have a home somewhere else. And the reason why this is so good is because when you go from your home, in your home, you can have it set up the way that you like it, right? All your things are there. You have, you know, say I have a sitting standing desk. I've got a nice ergonomic chair. I have a great mattress. I have, you know, my coffee maker, my, like everything is comfortable and well acclimatized to you. Then you go someplace else, like you're in an Airbnb or a hotel or something, a friend's house, and you don't have those things. And that's a meaningful decrease because it's just not personally catered to you. And so what you do is by having a second or third uh, base, it's like another home of yours that you reproduce all of those things. And this is really a wonderful experience. This like, as I said, in my experience, meaningfully your life goes up. What you do usually is you pick different places from a weather standpoint. You pick whatever type of weather it is that you like. I have some clients who don't like the heat, so they're going to be in cooler places during the summer that are sort of more moderate. And then they go to warmer places in the winter, which are, again, more moderate, and they make that work. Other people like the heat all year, so they're going to choose to follow the sun. Whatever it is for you, you pick and go accordingly. There's also sometimes cool things going on at certain times of year, so you'd like to be there for whatever the cultural activities are, etc. right? But this is the second one, is you kind of move between bases, and maybe then you do some travel out from those bases, but you have multiple bases, okay? Very nice way to live, more expensive, but nice way to live. The third way to go is what I would call uh, sort of the uh, frenetic, or, uh, hard, hard to describe what it would be, but the, basically the idea is that you're sort of continually traveling, okay? So here you don't really, you don't necessarily need to have a base at all, but usually if you have a base you don't see it much. And you're sort of doing kind of the equivalent of backpacking around the world, right? So you might be familiar in some cultures, it, when people are, I don't know, they graduate high school, they graduate university or whatever it is, they end up going backpacking and they might go for two, four, six eight months, a year, whatever. And they're kind of trying to see a lot of places in a relatively short period of time. Now, this experience, in my experience, as I've gotten older, I am far less interested in that type of lifestyle. I just find that at a certain point, always changing places, et cetera, always living out of a suitcase, creates a level of stress. And so it's cool to be able to see lots of places very quickly. And I think it's sort of a natural outfall of people who were stuck in a situation where they didn't have many, a lot of vacation time. Like, okay, let me go and try and live out this. Let me take the thing that I would do in two weeks normally and just extend it out for two, four, six months. And cool, great. Like, you can do that. It's wonderful to have that freedom, but hard to kind of in, maintain some sort of harmony as you're going, in my experience. Again, nice for a short time. As you get older, usually I find people are not so interested in it. This brings us to the fourth way. 
And I think this way is, you know, maybe a little bit underappreciated. People don't necessarily talk as much about it, at least not people who I talk to. And this is the idea of what we'd call slow travel. So here you don't have a base, but what you do is you kind of move, you're, you're doing this continual travel, maybe for a period of years. But what you do is you come into a place, let's say you go to Spain, and you might spend three months in Spain, right? So you say, okay, great, I'm in Spain for three months. You get to kind of immerse yourself into that culture more, you see things more, you have a place that you set up, that you become a little bit comfortable, you become acclimatized, and then you move on to the next place. You know, I don't know, maybe you go up to UK then, and you spend a few months in UK, and you kind of, maybe you're taking some brief trips out from there, et cetera, and then maybe you go to, I don't know, Brazil or something like that. Anyway, the point is that you're continually traveling. You might do sustain this for multiple years because it's fairly relaxing to get a place, know that's going to be your place over the next few months, immerse yourself a little bit, establish a routine, but try and do it in a way where you have a different cultural experience in each part of the world. And not that many people seem to do this, but I think that it's pretty cool. Uh, I see it in a sort of a different way. We have various different clients who end up buying boats. And so whether it's, you know, they're yachting around the world or they're sailing around the world, they have a little bit of that same experience where they have this consistency on the boat uh, and they might go for multiple years, but they're kind of hopping around from one place to another. So those are kind of the four, what I would call digital nomad lifestyles as I think about them. And so each one has its own merits. I think each one tends to favor a certain time in your life, but not necessarily. You could switch back and forth. And if you haven't tried some of them, I would encourage you to test them out. Just see what they're like. Always good to be able to expand our horizons and get a better sense for different ways of life, different, uh, different priorities, and uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Have you tried any of these? If you have, what was your experience? What did you like? What did you dislike? Are there some other ways that I haven't mentioned that you would recommend? Put them down below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.